Jacob off the garden. Jacob, you hear this? Okay. All right, so cat on my back. Anybody ever tried to do something when something's on your back? Roland, I'm sure every time he goes out to minister, he has to do a whole lot of stuff just to get out there, right? I mean, if you didn't have to do all that, all you had to do was show up and play the piano. It'd be awesome, right? Being a minister of the gospel has come a time in your life where it feels as if you've been pulled down and you've been held back. And every time you try to do something for the kingdom of God, it's like you've got this big, huge cat on your back and it's keeping you from going forward. The Bible says that when you get to the Deuteronomy 25 and 4, it says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox. You should not muzzle the ox when he goeth out to tread up the corn. See, when you get to this place where the, you're trying to minister and do the gospel and someone's trying to muzzle you and hinder you and stop you from doing what you're called to do, there comes a time when you recognize you got to make some adjustments and some yeah. changes. If you're going to be effective for the kingdom of God, you got to change up some things. The muzzle takes the ox and makes the ox struggle to get through, you know, there comes a time when we want to tread out the things in God's kingdom that we've got to recognize if I don't let loose of some things, if I don't change some areas in my life, we're foreseeing we are caught aside by every weight that do, and sin that do us so easily beset us. Let us let loose of those things and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. There's things in our lives that hinder our ministries, that hinder our businesses, that hinder our personal lives, that hinder our families from being able to function and live out a successful life for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This cat on my back, this is the oxes, muzzled oxes, as they try to go forward. And they many times if you'll have two stubborn oxes, They'll begin to fight against each other all along. It would be better for you to just have one ox plowing that field and doing its job than to try to tie it to something that it's not meant to be tied to and try to make two do the job of, of, uh, together that they're fighting one another with. And sometimes in the kingdom of God, we get connected to people that aren't really with us. They're not really for us. And so we try to build things together, and because of the struggle that we face between one another, the field that needs treading and the corn that needs treading and the plowing that needs to take place becomes impossible. And when we get done, we make such a mess of the field, there's nothing left of it. There's no weapons that we have left in our ability to fight the enemy off with, and the things that we meant to plant become impossible to plant. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not puzzle the ox. David, the Bible says that, we talked about last week about being stripped. The Bible says that when David went to fight Goliath, that the king saw, he told him, come on, he said, now I've been fighting a long time, David. I'm not fighting this dude, you know, I'll, I'm king now, I don't have to fight no more. But I'll tell you what I'll do, since you want to really step it up. You want to go out there and do something about it. I don't want to look like a fool. At least one of us will go out there. Even if you get killed, at least we attempted to fight. So what I want you to do, David, is I want you to come and I want you to put my armor on you. Now, this is some strong armor. I got the best equipment there is. You know what I mean? This is some good stuff, right? And that, when, that, when that Goliath sees you, he's going to say, man, that's a warrior. Even though you're just a boy, he ain't going to recognize it because this armor is going to stand out. He ain't going to know you're just a boy. David said, you know what? After David, the Bible says, put it on, and it had not been tested. And David put on this armor, and he began to put the armor on. He began to put all this stuff on and all this equipment on of Saul's. And when he got done, he could barely move. He was trying to do something, but he was so bound up with this equipment that when he moved, he looked like the Wizard of Oz tin man trying to move up in the place. Everything he did would be harder. Everything he strived to do would be impossible. See, sometimes you got to recognize if you don't take off the enemy's equipment and take off the other man's stuff and start trying to build the kingdom of God your own way the way God's ordained you to do. Let me tell you something. If you don't begin to build the kingdom of God the way God has sent for you to build it, it will not be built. If you continue to try to fight the battle the same way someone else fought the battle, you will not win. 
If you continue trying to take on the responsibilities like someone else did and deal with things the same way that so and so did, you'll never be effective in the kingdom of God. But when you recognize like David, I can't fight this big old giant in this stuff. I got to make my mind up. I got to do it my own way. And he began to pull off the stuff that was supposed to protect him. He began to take off the stuff that was supposed to empower him. He began to strip down that he was nothing but a boy again. And he stood before this giant just as he was. When we get to the place that we stand against our enemy, the adversary, as we are in our own self, and we begin to build the kingdom of God our own way, the way God's ordained us to do it, it may not make sense the way Caleb gets up here and dances. And show him how you praise a little bit for me. Shane. Come on. I'll put you on the spot in a minute. This is how my man, when we on the Limeburger Park and all these young people everywhere dancing, this is how Caleb praises the Lord. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm about to call him David. David took off his outer garment, right? David said, you know what? I'm going to put him. He said that for sure. Go ahead then. Go ahead and show him how you praise the Lord. He does something I ain't never seen. He gets more. I don't know what he does, but he gets to it. And you know it's God. Amen. He said that one night. He's so busy last night chasing girls at the rodeo. He didn't even see him once. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why are you turning your head? So we get to this place that we recognize if I'm going to fight this adversary, if I'm going to be a victorious man, a woman of God, I got to do it the way God's told me to do it. I can't do it the way so and so has told me to do it, but I got to do it the way the Lord God Almighty has ordained me to do it. If I'm going to build something up for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, it may not look like much. I may not have the splendor of somebody else. I may not walk around with the same robe. I may not walk around with the same armor. It may look like I don't know nothing about warfare. But let me tell you something. When I come into the presence of this one big giant, I'm going to do something nobody else would have ever thought to do. I'm going to pull out a little sling that looks like nothing in the sight of man. But when I get done with this little man's sling, when I get done shaking my fist at the enemy, when I get done shaking my hand at the one who's come up against me, when I get done laying down the sword of Saul and laying down the armor of Saul, when I get done trying to, try to do it that way and do it God's way, I'm going to release something. Hallelujah. And when I get done releasing something, the enemy himself will have no power to prevail against what God's given me to do. God's going to don't try to do it anybody else's way. Do it God's way. Sometimes God tells me to do something that don't make sense. And it's not the preacher way of doing it. But let me tell you something, when you get to the path that you think you got to do it a certain way because people's watching you and you're supposed to be a so-called preacher, you're a fool. But the Bible says the foolishness of preaching. God delivered many. When we begin to step out in the foolish realm. When we begin to step out of man's ways and step into God's ways. When we begin to say, you know what, I'm going to do it the way God's ordained me to do it. I may not look like much in your sight, but I'll come up before the enemy. And not with a spear, not with a javelin, but I came in the name of the Lord. When I come in the name of the Lord of hosts, he says, I recognize that when I take off your garment, your armor. And I put on one nobody can see with the natural eye. That's why I talk about it. He says, I want you to go and put on the armor of God when you get up. Nobody can see that armor. But when it exists in your life, the enemy has no authority. It has no power against you. He can't contain you. He can't stop you. He can't hinder you. He can't destroy you. He's nothing in your sight. David said, you know what? If I'm going to praise God like Caleb, I got to do it my way. And last week we talked about being stripped. But when David got done stripping in the street, people laughed at him. People mocked him. His own wife began to look at him as a fool. But he said, you know what? I don't care. I know I'm still going to be king when I get done taking off this garment. I will still be king of Israel when I get done dancing in the street. You don't have the ability to have it or contain my praises. My praises aren't for you. My praises weren't meant for you. My desire wasn't for you. My heart wasn't begging for you. But my name was called out by him. And when he got done calling me, he said, come before me with praises. And so I stripped off his outer garment. The Bible says he began to dance in the street. As he began to dance in the street, the glory of God was on him instead of his garment. 
It's time for us to quit trying to do things everybody else's way. That's right.